Join us now to talk markets, Emily Rowland, co-chief investment strategist at John Hancock uh, Asset Management. Are we going to uh, we're going to see some some positive momentum going into uh, Christmas and the Santa Claus rally? Do you think, Emily? Yeah, Joe, one of the biggest uh, gifts that investors just got from Santa was just mentioned on your last segment that the U.S. dollar has been weakening. And what we've seen is that these disinflation readings that we've gotten have been really welcome news for markets. It's caused U.S. Uh, Treasury yields to fall. It's caused the dollar to weaken. And that just causes this really global liquidity release valve for markets, which has um, helped risk assets immensely going into the end of the year. So we can continue to see financial conditions loosen here, the dollar weaken. I do think that there's some momentum here heading into the rest of the year. So when we get a revision on the prior quarter's GDP, we're so far into the next quarter that we have a way of just saying, well, yeah, that, that was a long time ago, even though it wasn't that long. But 5.2% doesn't look like 5 GDP doesn't look like a friendly number for Fed rate cuts or for even stopping on hiking. But, but you think there's extenuating factors in that? Yeah, I mean, we're big believers that friends don't let friends use lagging economic data. And GDP is certainly, a, you know, a prime example of lagging data. It's well known that the economy was strong heading in, you know, in Q3. And, it, and we're still seeing some some positive news in, in Q4 here. We look at things like initial claims at 209,000 last week. Uh, the labor market is, is doing phenomenal. Consumers are hanging in there. We've seen an upside surprise, a modest one, though, in the business surveys, things like PMI. So the economy continues to to crank along here. The challenge, I think, is that investors are really leaning into risk here. We're hearing a lot of the narrative that this early cycle environment is beginning and we've sort of skipped the recession, gone right from late cycle to early cycle. And we want to be really mindful of chasing that narrative here. I was interested to hear in your last segment uh, around meme stocks coming back into the news flow. We're seeing, you know, copper prices up 6%. Over the past month, the VIX is now sub-13. High-yield bond spreads really contained at under 4%. So it feels like there's been this shift in the narrative that everything is awesome heading into the end of the year. We do want to continue to own risk assets, but we want to be really mindful about the ones that we're embracing. We still like higher quality stocks. And we want to think about also looking at bonds as having the ability to do some heavy lifting in portfolios into next year. Do you, because of uh, who you work for, do you, do you like bonds more than the, the average uh, asset allocator, do you think, Emily? I mean, insurance companies need, need to know the money's going to be there a lot of time. That's right. And, and we are certainly experts in this space. But I'll tell you, as an agnostic market strategist, we frankly haven't liked bonds very much in the last decade. Um, you know, we've had a low yield, low uh, environment, low inflation, low growth environment, which really hasn't supported bonds much at all. And then we saw this massive re-rating. Of course, we know all the culprits, higher inflation, aggressive Fed. We saw the worst returns for bonds in history with the ag down negative 13 percent last year. You know, you guys talk a lot about equities on your show and investors get excited when there's a correction in the equity market and we all get to buy the stuff that we love at a cheaper price. Nobody thinks about bonds that way. And we think that there's tremendous opportunity there to lean in, take advantage of the income, five to 6% on high quality bonds. You're also gonna see duration in our view as a tailwind into next year. We're not saying don't own stocks. We're just saying that bonds can start to do their job in portfolios. Job, yeah, it, it, that's, the, that's the perverse thing about bonds. When, when bonds do well, that's usually a good financial assets do well. And just you'd rather be in stocks again anyway. So you're back to stocks. But uh, it's, it, that's what we talked about mostly. But so it's not bad to talk a little bit about. Uh,